The sensational Spider-Woman first appeared in Marvel Spotlight number 32 in 1977 as an agent of Hydra named Arachna, sent to infiltrate S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Mediterranean headquarters. During her mission, we learn some of her past when she recalls her earliest memories, those of being chased by an angry mob in a small alpine village. Fortunately, she was able to use her powers to defend herself, powers which attracted the attention of Count Otto Vermis, the local leader of the terrorist group known as Hydra. Arachna joined Hydra at the promise of being able to learn more about her forgotten past. Hydra's goals were kept from her, however, as was the information they retrieved from her subconscious mind. Regardless, the mysterious woman excelled in her combat training, and with her spider-like strength, agility, and ability to adhere to surfaces, not to mention her venomous hand blasts, she was given the costume and code name of Spider-Woman. During her time with Hydra, she also fell in love with a fellow agent named Jared, and when Jared was captured by S.H.I.E.L.D., it was Spider-Woman who was sent to retrieve him. Gliding in unseen, Spider-Woman infiltrated the S.H.I.E.L.D. facility where Jared was being kept, determined to complete her mission and assassinate the S.H.I.E.L.D. director, Nick Fury. Fury, meanwhile, was challenged to a fight by the captured Hydra agent, a challenge he was more than happy to accept, as they intended to interrogate the prisoner anyway. During the scuffle, Spider-Woman broke into the interrogation room, easily dispatching the S.H.I.E.L.D. guards and going after Fury. Fury ran to hit a button on a control console, but was grabbed by the prisoner, allowing Spider-Woman to get close enough for her venom to be deadly. However, at the last second, Fury flipped Jared over his body, using him as a human shield as Spider-Woman struck. The enraged woman grabbed Fury by the neck, slamming him into the console behind him and preparing to finish him off. However, the screen on the console displayed video footage of Jared's capture and showed him committing brutal acts of terrorism. Arachna rushed to her dying lover in disbelief, and in his final moments, Jared confessed that he had been ordered to start their relationship and to allow himself to be captured by S.H.I.E.L.D., all so that she would kill Nick Fury. Running away, Spider-Woman swore revenge on her Hydra commander, Otto Vermis, and returned to his Hydra base, making no effort to prevent S.H.I.E.L.D. from following. Gliding to safety, she crashed her ship into the side of Vermis's castle and began her assault. Vermis, of course, fled, but was unable to escape the Spider-Woman, as Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. cleaned up the remaining Hydra agents. Vermis tried to bargain his way free, offering to help Arachna escape S.H.I.E.L.D. in exchange for his life. Arachna agreed, but on the condition that Vermis reveal everything he knew about her origin, which Vermis claimed involved a man known as the High Evolutionary. The High Evolutionary was a scientist who developed a process of transforming animals into human-like beings. Using this process, he created his own race of humanoid animals, which he called the New Men. According to Vermis, the High Evolutionary had created Arachna from a regular spider, somehow making her look completely human. However, because she was so different to them, Arachna was ostracized by the other New Men, and left the High Evolutionary's facility in Wondagore Mountain. Arachna even tried to make a life for herself in a nearby village, growing close to a local man, but what happiness she attempted to find was shattered when a gang of locals decided to startle the couple as a prank. Unfamiliar with their powers, the sudden noise caused her to instinctively eject a venom blast, accidentally killing her first lover. This was the tragedy that led to the village hunting her, and to her becoming an agent of Hydra. While Spider-Woman was upset at the sudden revelations, Vermis threw a gas pellet, attempting to kill her and escape in his personal rocket. However, what Vermis didn't know was that Spider-Woman's powers rendered her immune to toxins and poisons, and so she leapt on the back of his plane and began to bend the tail fin, gliding away as the rocket crashed into a nearby cliffside with Vermis on board. Spider-Woman next appeared in Marvel 2-in-1, seemingly working for Hydra again, and was sent to take out Ben Grimm, aka The Thing, of the world-famous super team The Fantastic Four. Apparently, after taking down her Hydra unit, she was attacked and captured yet again. Hydra used mind control techniques to bend her to their will, but when the battle with the Thing resulted in a dunk in the river, she regained her senses. 
The two then teamed up to fight back against Hydra and to rescue Ben's girlfriend, Alicia Masters, who Hydra had transformed using Spider-Woman's DNA. It was also in the pages of Marvel 2-in-1 that Spider-Woman learned from a being called Mordred the Mystic that she was in fact human, and always had been. This revelation was elucidated upon further in Spider-Woman number 1. As she slept, the memories unlocked by Mordred the Mystic bubbled to the surface during her dreams. She recalled two men, Herbert Wyndham and Jonathan Drew. Although Wyndham's name isn't mentioned in this book, it is revealed elsewhere. Wyndham was an expert on evolution and the inventor of the genetic accelerator. Jonathan was an expert on arachnids and also husband to Miriam and father to Jessica. Jonathan Drew believed that together, he and Wyndham could devise a way to infuse humans with spider DNA, safeguarding them against the world of pollution and radiation they were quickly creating. When they traveled to a remote mountain to continue their research unhindered, the two men found a hidden cache of uranium, large and valuable enough to fund their research for years to come. With the money they accrued, they built the technological stronghold known as Wondagore. However, things started to go south when Jessica Drew fell ill to radiation poisoning. Jonathan suspected that his experimental spider serums could save his daughter's life, but they would take time to take effect. Time that she didn't have. However, Wyndham suggested using his genetic accelerator on Jessica, hopefully increasing the effectiveness of the serum. Miriam objected, but it seemed the stress of the situation was too much for both parents. Miriam Drew passed away, and Jonathan vanished. Wyndham, meanwhile, kept watch over the girl, keeping her alive and continuing her treatments over the years. By the time Jessica Drew was fully cured and regained consciousness, she was a full-grown woman and Herbert Wyndham had adopted the identity of the High Evolutionary. With her past remembered, Jessica Drew changed her appearance slightly, dyeing her hair and altering her mask so she could go out into the world and discover where her future would take her. And that's the original origin of Spider-Woman. If you like this video and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and check out some other videos on this channel. As always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, along with links to my Twitter, Patreon, Instagram, stuff like that. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!